Welcome back to another video. Today I'm really excited to talk about a plant that I haven't talked about before. I've been growing it in my garden for a few years and it has grown really well. It is a native plant. It's not very widely known, but in this video I want to shed some light on this plant and talk about why I grow it in the garden and why you might want to consider doing the same. So the plant of interest today is called Carolina lupine. It is a native plant to the United States. It's more common in the southeastern area of the country, but it survives up here in zone 6A just fine. It's a dieback perennial, meaning that it comes up every year and will grow and flower and set seed each year. But at the end of the growing season, when the frost comes and winter sets in, this plant dies right back to the ground. But then the next spring, it shoots back up from the roots and starts that process all over again. So the name is Carolina lupine. However, it's not a true lupine. Uh, lupines are those flowers that we know, those plants that we know, they are in the legume family as well. Both of these plants are, but lupines are known for either their edible seeds, uh, certain species, or their flowers. They have nitrogen fixing uh, capabilities, but the Carolina lupine is not a true lupine. So it doesn't have the same uses or, or personality that true lupines do. This Carolina lupine is in a completely different genus, the Thermopsis genus. In fact, I think I'll take a stab at the Latin name. I think it's Thermopsis villosis, or, or I think it's Thermopsis villosa uh, is the, the scientific name. So the genus name is Thermopsis, the species name is villosa. And also in an attempt to avoid any confusion, instead of calling this plant Carolina lupine, throughout the rest of this video I will, I will be referring to this plant as Thermopsis, just so that we're clear on, on what plant I'm talking about. I'm not talking about lupines. I'm talking about the Thermopsis villosa. Now this is not an edible plant, uh, at least as far as I know. It may even potentially be toxic to some degree, but there's not really a lot of information out there in, in any, any meaningful capacity that I have found yet. However, even though this isn't really an edible plant that um, I'm growing, I still find it very useful and very helpful in the garden to help uh, facilitate the process of growing other plants and in, and in encouraging other forms of uh, wildlife to be more active participants in this garden. So being that it is a legume, it has the capacity to facilitate the fixation of nitrogen, right? So it feeds specific microbes in the soil that take nitrogen from the air and put it in the soil. So this is a perennial legume. That means that it's able to grow over many seasons and its root can, can penetrate deep down into the soil over the course of multiple seasons. And even throughout the winter time, it's possible that these microbes are able to still be sustained and to still live off of this perennial legume. You know, whereas with other legumes that we might be more familiar with in agriculture, like, like uh, soy, peas, or beans, these plants die off in the winter time and they have to be replanted the next year. And when these plants die off, those mycorrhizal organisms that are in the soil die along with them and it has to restart the next year, you know? And so it might get a later start and it's also not as powerful, right? Because the plant has to start from scratch. It has to regrow in an, in an entire season. Whereas this Thermopsis plant can take off from where it left off before. Uh, in the last season and it has these established microbial colonies and communities um, already attached to its roots and the capacity to expand on that uh, throughout the next growing season. So that's one thing that I really like about perennial legumes and also being that it has a deep taproot, it can also help break up soil compaction. So this plant is noted to be deer resistant. Uh, however, deer resistant does not mean deer proof. And from my own experience, I have had the opportunity to realize that this plant is not deer proof. However, I find that, you know, if you just put fencing, if you, if you only have like 
a plant or a, or a few plants uh, of, of, of this Thermopsis plant uh, uh, in your area, uh, you may want to consider fencing them around them at least at least until you can propagate more uh, to a point where you can afford to, to let some go in different areas of the landscape uh, and, and be a food source for these other animals. So adequate fencing should clear up that problem if it is a problem for you. So once established, these plants are pretty drought resistant, uh, right? And probably part of that is because of that deep taproot that's able to access stores of nutrients and water um, that other plants may not be able to reach that are so deep down in the soil. And this deep taproot helps to break up soil compaction, right? And then it also not only breaks up the compaction, compaction but being that legume that we talked about, it helps uh, move nitrogen from the air into the soil, into the deeper la layers of the soil that annual legumes may not be may not have the capacity to do. Because of this plant's deep taproot, it can make it tricky to transplant. Whenever I've had to transplant Carolina lupine, I've never had it die on me because of that. It has always come back. But realize that if you do transplant it, um, like say in the spring, that year's growth will be stunted and it won't, it won't grow very tall. These plants are plants that sh can generally get between um, four between four feet tall to seven feet tall, I'd say. However, if you transplant it in the spring, it might only grow to um, two feet or three feet tall, and that's totally fine. Uh, just realize that the next year, it, it should grow, it should return back to its full form, back to its full height. And when it is transplanted, just make sure that you add an adequate supply of water, even though these even though these plants are drought resistant, transplanting can cause a little bit of extra stress for an already established plant. The growth will be stunted for that one year because it needs that time to reestablish its taproot and its fungal and, and uh, microbial uh, communities that the, that the root supports. So this plant can be propagated by seed. Uh, however, the seeds, I believe, need to be stratified for a certain amount of time before they can be planted. I haven't quite yet figured out the trick, but what I'm doing this year is I am is I've been harvesting the seeds this fall, late late this fall, and even into this winter. Uh, once we've already had some cold and freezing weather, we, we've had some damp and wet weather along with that, and and I'm just taking these seeds and putting them in the soil for over the winter. That way they can continue to go through the freezes, the thaws, that natural stratification process. And I've been planting them among some blackberry plants that I have. These are blackberry plants that have been transplanted, so they're not very large this season, and they probably won't be very large next season, especially earlier in the spring. And if these Thermopsis plants do get uh, kind of large and, and stuff gets tangled up and it looks like it's not really a good companion uh, planting situation, I can move I can move those Thermopsis plants to other locations. I can transplant them uh, to, to a much more suitable location if that need arises. And these transplanted plants will just need a little bit of extra care uh, after I do transplant them. That way they can still grow well, especially in the ensuing seasons. Uh, we noted that it's native. Uh, Actually, it's also a good pollinator plant. It has these beautiful flower spikes, yellow flower spikes, that attract pollinators like bees, wasps, uh, and other insects. So it can also be useful in that regard too, in the garden. So plants don't have to be edible to be useful in the garden or in an agricultural scenario. We have to kind of broaden our focus, look a little bit beyond just the immediate um, or obvious needs or, or goals that we have and understand the roles that other plants may have to play in this ecosystem that we're trying to support, that we're trying to build, that we're trying to regenerate. And when transitioning to a much more perennial dominant plant, this can be a nitrogen fixer, fixer in like a mid-succession phase. It's not an annual ground cover plant, 
and it's not like a fully blown leguminous tree like a black locust or a honey locust or anything like that this is more of like in an in-between stage you know maybe between a field and between a forest right it's a hardy perennial is a hardy dieback perennial legume that can help to fix nitrogen with a deep tap root. It, it's a perennial fertilizer plant, right? You think of maybe alfalfa might, or, or sweet clover might be another example that might come to mind, right? The, the foliage can potentially, because of that deep tap root, it, there's a good chance it has a wide variety of, of, of uh, minerals that other plants might not be able to have access to or as easy access to uh, and so the foliage can also be composted or mulched back into the garden you know maybe in a chop and drop uh, scenario but the roots also add their own biomass uh, and their own uh, nitrogen fixation and, um, uh, and, 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 uh, and and soil decompaction uh, qualities as well into this conversation all right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. I hope you learned something from it. Maybe you will want to go out there, go to a native plant sh store or some nursery that has this plant, this Thermopsis villosa, and plant it in your garden or in your landscaping design so that you can bring more of a diversity to into your landscape. And not only that, but also can t help to rehabilitate that landscape, to fix nitrogen, to add more of like a, a, a fertilizer plant, natural fertilizer plant into this landscape, onto your property. So you have a whole new avenue to, to explore with uh, including this plant in your life. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, take care, and I look forward to catching you in a future video.